did you watch the documentary on Netflix about uh, Jam Master J and his murder? No, I did. I did. It was a very, very interesting uh, documentary. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I always feel like I know everything, you know, because of everyone I talk to <laughs> on and off camera. Yeah. But yeah. I actually learned a few things from watching that documentary. Mm-hmm. And ultimately, his murder is unsolved. Yeah. Right? Is. But I'd always heard these rumors that... Before he died, he was mixed up on some, with some street shit and some drug shit because his money was low, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, you hear little rumblings, but it was never, you know, actually clarified or expanded on. So I just figured, okay, that's just nonsense. So mm-hmm. in this documentary, there, you know, was was Jay, you know, was uh, was Jam Master Jay dealing drugs at the end and all his friends like that. That's ridiculous. This guy's an international star. He was touring, you know, blah blah. blah. It's ridiculous. Yeah, no, he was, he was. And then they got to this one guy, right? Mm-hmm. One of his close friends. He goes, "Well, yeah. Uh, near the end, Jay's money was really low, and they went out. Him and a couple other Jay, him and you know some other person went out to L.A. to try to." Flip their money. Jay, Jay-Z? Uh, Jam Master Jay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Jam Master Jay and a couple of his people went out to L.A. to flip their money, mm-hmm. and they ended up losing their money. You know, it didn't didn't work out, so they did a plan B, and plan Bs never work oh, out in the drug game, yeah. and they basically went back home down like twenty, thirty thousand dollars 30000 And we don't know whether that had anything to do with his death, but it's sort of an interesting situation where you see someone who is, you know, has made all this legitimate rap money go back and try to risk their freedom doing some drug shit. Because mm-hmm. that's actually, you know, Buju Bantan just came home right. from doing the exact same thing, yeah. essentially. <laughs> yeah. He's trying to flip kilos yeah. with an undercover. <laughs> he just came home. How long was he gone? He was gone like maybe eight years or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome home, Buju. Welcome home, Buju. Um, have you seen that type of thing where people try to get mixed up in some drug shit when they really had no no business doing it? Hmm. I never really been close to the drug game as far as. Interacting with dealers and things like that, and because I told you, you know, m- motherfuckers wasn't trying to see me coming. You know, what I'm saying? I was, I was the big bad wolf. You know, what I'm saying, trying to blow your doors down. Well, I mean, I, I've actually, you know, me and you never talked about it, but I said this story in a couple of my other interviews uh, not too long ago. I actually try to get, I, I, I got myself mixed up with one of my homies, and I put us put up some money to buy some coke, and he ended up just robbing me basically the money yeah <laughs> point blank that was the, the beginning and end of my drug career and i was already graduated from school i had a i had my own business i was making money and i suddenly had this i had just seen deep cover and i somehow came up with this idea that i'm going to do this on the side oh, and man. and he robbed me the first and this was my homie he robbed me the first time and i remember i was talking to freeway ricky about this yeah. and we both talked about how how lucky i got that that was pretty much the end of it, right? You know right. what I mean. And, and hopefully it wasn't the large lump sum. That, it was that, it was pretty large, unfortunately. For you at the for time, for me at the time. Yeah, right yeah. now it's not. <laughs> yeah. But it's still an amount that I'm like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I was that stupid. Like, what he doing? What the guy doing right now? He living his life. I ran into him. He I. Right. He, he some doing years all right. later. <laughs> And he said, oh, when I ran to him, he said, no, no, I'm going to pay you, man. I just got paid through American Express. You know, I got you. You know, just open up American Express. And I went and got the account, and he stopped returning <laughs> my calls after that. And, <laughs> but it was, it was a very interesting feeling at the time because I'm like, okay, he just, you know, he's, he clearly just robbed me of this money. Only thing I could really do at this point is violence. That's it. I can't call the police. That's I can't sue it. them. I can't do nothing. <laughs> Violence is my only That's answer. That's only option. And it wasn't an option for me. I didn't have a crew, and I wasn't going to do it myself. Right, right. And 
it was it was a very eye opening kind of experience. Yeah, don't don't get involved. In don't shit get involved you ain't ready for. in shit that you're not ready for. <laughs> yeah. You know, I remember I was talking yeah. to my, my my actual D boy homies about this, and I'm like, where'd they go wrong? He goes, now we'll see. You always got to be with the money. See, that's yeah. that's the problem. You you let the money go. On its own, you got to be with it at every step. And I'm like, shit, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but look how it turned out. Though. It turned out cool. <laughs> and, and I take a certain amount of solace because this was someone I was running with. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not going to say what our connection is because... It's irrelevant. It's irrelevant. Yeah. But had he not done that, he could have potentially been involved in all the various businesses that I've been in over the years and he could have made 50 times that fucking, yeah. fucking with me. Yeah, yeah, man, that's what you do. You let people play themselves. You yeah. know what I'm saying? That, and I, I, well, after my career of jacking, you know, for lack of a better term for it, um, I was blessed to realize I had this gift, you know, to spit. Mm-hmm. And once I realized it for what it was, like you called it, is it really is a gift. And it made me appreciate that God had gave it to me, and I made a commitment to myself that I would never taint what I was blessed with as a gift with contaminating it with something that was unclean or unpure. Mm -hmm. And before I even, you know, was Muslim, anything like that, that was just how I felt inside about cherishing my gift, you know. So homies would ask me, like, hey, D, let's do this, and, you know. And if they was real cool with me, you know, sometimes I might be like, well, you know, I got this for you, you know. Hopefully this will help you out, do what you got to do, and, you know, I don't expect nothing back. You know, if I need something, I holler at you, but, you know, that's you, man. Go and do that. And I would never try to, you know, get mixed up in none of that. 